Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's talk about the four large moons of Jupiter, also known as the Galilean moons, since Galileo was the first one who actually looked at Jupiter with a telescope, about a 20x telescope, and saw four little dots of light in a perfect line along Jupiter. And as he observed that over time, he saw the dots move and he began to realize that there was actually four moons that were circling around Jupiter which was kind of a, hmm, a really big news because for the first time ever there was an indication that there were objects traveling around another object besides the Sun. Hmm. But now that we have satellites and very nice telescopes we're able to come up and take very nice close-up pictures of the four moons. So we have Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto and in this video we're simply going to talk about the basic structure and the basic uh, statistics of the four moons and we're going to compare them to Earth's moon as well because that always helps. So we're going to talk about the orbital radius, the orbital period, the diameter, the mass, the density and the albedo, some general facts about the four moons. So notice that they are in distance away from Jupiter, Io is the closest, then we have Europa, then we have Ganymede and then we have Callisto and the distances vary from a little bit over 400,000 kilometers to almost 2 million kilometers. Now compared to the Moon and the Earth, the Moon is only 384,000 kilometers away from the Earth, so that means that the four Galilean moons are farther away from Jupiter than they are than the Moon is from the Earth. However, since Jupiter is such a much bigger planet than the Earth, that seems that these four moons are relatively close to the planet, so they have to have much higher velocities, a much shorter period, orbital periods, in order to stay in orbit around the moon. Notice that Io will circle Jupiter in less than two Earth days. That's absolutely phenomenal. As big as that planet is, Io, being farther away than our moon from the Earth, needs less than two days to travel around the planet. Now, of course, if it was traveling any slower than that, it would simply spiral inward and collide with Jupiter. So it needs that speed in order to stay away from the gravitational clutches of Jupiter, so to speak. Europa takes about three and a half days, Ganymede takes a little bit over seven days, and only Callisto, which is far enough away, almost two million kilometers, can take its time and take almost 17 days to go around uh, Jupiter once. Because that those variations in speed, as you observe the planet Jupiter with a small telescope and you see the four moons, sometimes one of the moons will be behind Jupiter, you only see three dots. Sometimes you'll see three dots on one side and one dot on the other side, or you see all four moons on one side and none on the other side. It's kind of interesting to keep track of that because the variation in the speed of the moons, you'll have all those various situations popping up. Sometimes the moon will be in front of Jupiter and then you don't see it as well, not with an amateur telescope. Compared to the moon, it needs 27.3 days to make one trip around the Earth because the Earth is not nearly as big. And if it went any faster than that, it would just simply spiral out into space. Any slower than that, again, it would collide with the Earth. How about size-wise? Well, it turns out that four of the three, uh, three of the four moons of Jupiter are actually larger than our own moon. Notice only Europa is a little bit smaller than our moon. All the other moons, Io, Ganymede, and Callisto, are considerably larger, especially Ganymede and Callisto. And Ganymede is so large that it's actually larger than the planet Mercury. As far as the mass is concerned, notice that it's anywhere from 8.93 times 10 to the 22nd or 4.79 times 10 to the 22nd all the way up to 1.48 times 20 to 10 to the 23rd. That's in kilograms, but that may not mean a lot unless you look at these numbers a lot. So it's better to compare it to the size of the moon. And if you call the size of the moon equal to 1, then notice that uh, mass-wise, Io is about 22% heavier or more massive, I should say, than the Moon. Notice Europa is considerably less massive than the Moon. Ganymede is twice, has twice the mass and uh, Callisto has about 50% more mass than the Moon. Density-wise, we see a very interesting trend. Just as the planets become less dense as you go farther away from the Sun, well, it turns out that the density of the Moons also diminish as you go further out from Jupiter. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, Earth is the most dense planet, which is true. However, 
is that it's compressed density. Since Earth is the largest terrestrial planet, it is compressed more due to gravitational forces, and so it gives you a higher density due to the compression of the force of gravity. If you take the non-compressed densities, Mercury is by far the densest planet in our solar system because it has a greater proportion of iron to rock. So we see a similar kind of trend here for the moons. Three and a half times the density of water down to 1.85 times the density of water. Compared to the moon, notice that, it, that the first two moons, Io and Europa, are relatively uh, dissimilar to the density of the moon. So they have a much higher proportion of rock to other materials. The indication then would be that we have moons here, these two moons probably contain a lot more ice water and these two moons here probably uh, comparatively contain more rock and other minerals that make it heavier than what you would expect if it was made purely out of rock. Another interesting concept of the moons here is the albedo. The albedo is an indication of how much of the sunlight that they receive is actually reflected. And the higher the albedo, the more light they reflect, the brighter they appear in a picture. Notice if we look here, the, the first moon, Io, and Europa tend to be fairly reflective. And then these two planets, Ganymede and Callisto, tend to be much darker. And that is indicated by their albedo. You see that 0.63 and 0.64 are very high albedos for two moons. Ganymede is still fairly high, but much lower than these two. And then notice the albedo of Callisto, which has a lot of dark material in its surface, is much lower. What was surprising was when you compared to the moon, the moon even has less of, a, of an albedo than the four moons of Jupiter. That's because the moon is covered by a material called regolite, and regolite does not reflect light very well. It scatters light, but it doesn't reflect light very well, and so therefore it has a very low albedo. Although the moon, the full moon at night, still looks very bright, but can you imagine if the moon had the albedo of Io on a full moon, it would be absolutely phenomenal. We'd get about five times as much light from the moon as we do now. Five, maybe even six times as much light. So, there, there you go. There gives you a nice comparison between the four moons. But of course, it's more interesting to actually get into more of the details of each moon. And that's what we're going to do now in the next videos. We're going to cover each moon separately in each of the four, four coming videos to show you a little bit more about the, what the moons are all about. It's, they're absolutely spectacular. Each moon in their own right has some very unique features that we want to go and explore. So stay tuned and we'll see what each of the moons looks like those four big moons around Jupiter. The moon that has supposed to be water. The moon that is a lot of water on the surface is Europa. It's the smallest of the four moons and it's presumed that that is completely covered by ice and underneath all that ice we presume that most if not all the surface is covered by a liquid ocean of some sort of briny water. So we'll see. We'll, we're going to explore that. Should it be closer to one then? Well, it's only a layer. So true, you know, people say, well, if it has so much ice and water, should the density be much lower? But the answer is no, because most of the planet is still rock. It's actually a layer of water and ice around, oh, I said planet, I should say moon. The other two, they have a lot of rock and ice mixed in together. So it's not like there's a layer of water uh, on top. It's just that the composition of those moons tend to be much more rock ice composition. And we see that more as you go further out into the solar system.